Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to leave your problems on the other side of the Gulf Stream and join us on a little piece of paradise that we call home. It's where the bonefish meet the billfish. This is the Walker's K Podcast. Here are your hosts, Captain Ian and his first mate, Big Bad John. Take it away, boys. I do all right? John, was that God? Did we just die? (laughs) That comes in and Johnny! Can we go back to the frigate? Part of the set. Line? Line. Content of the Walker's K podcast and any words that come out of the mouths of Ian and John do not reflect the values of our Walker's K. Who <laughs> wrote that one? <laughs> In a world where there aren't enough podcasts. Dude, listen, 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 listen to this real quick. Should get six or seven views. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Welcome, Walkers Nation, to the new Walkers K podcast brought to you by shopwalkersk.com. I'm one of your hosts, Captain Dean Weber, and I got by my side my mate, John Smith. What up, what up? Me and John are here sitting down the Viking 80 frigate in the Walker's K Marina. And, you know, we figure there ain't enough podcasts out there. So we're going to do one, too. And we're going to bring you the history of Walker's, history of the Bahamas overall. We're going to talk fishing. We're going to talk stories. We're going to talk to some legendary people from around here. And, you know, there'll be a little debauchery in there as well and some humor. So we'll see. What are you looking forward to about it, John? Oh, it's just getting some uh, some legends in here, getting some people who have some like real history when the you know the heyday of Walker's K, you know, and uh, um, we got a handful of people too around the island that I'd like to get in here, you know, and Annie being one, uh, Flanagan being one of them, you know, her family's got a crazy amount of history around here and the stories they have, and um, it'd just be interesting to hear from the, the people themselves, you know, instead of hearing stories, you know. Uh, around the world or around the fishing community you can actually hear from the people themselves so it's gonna be interesting should be pretty wild so that's what we're looking forward to a lot of legends a lot of good people we're going to talk about the history from when it was in the heyday and the new heyday that is coming and what will be coming we'll be taking user questions so go ahead and comment like subscribe on all our social medias if you have questions go ahead and ask us we're going to try to answer them and get them done and you know we're really looking forward to this so you know, let's get this going. We're we're ready to do this. So stay tuned for our very first episode. We got the band, the myth, the legend himself, Carl Allen. We're super excited to have him on the first episode, letting us do this about Walker's Key. So stay tuned, and we're going to have a great time on this podcast. So let's do this, John. Yeehaw. So for the first episode here on the Walker's Key podcast, we have none other than the man himself, the El Jefe, the boss, the Commodore, <laughs> Mr. Carl Allen. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Captain Ian, Johnny. Sir. So, Mr. Allen, you're the owner of Walker's Key. Go ahead. It's a, it's a very good story. It's a well-known story about the first time you came to Walker's. Oh, God. I, I've told it a lot, but I'm going to tell the good part here. So, you know, I grew up on the water. My first experience was in uh, the Finger Lakes up in New York. That's where I'm from. And uh, parents got divorced at a young age, and we moved to Chicago. And lo and behold, I grew up on what I thought was an ocean, uh, Lake Michigan. (laughs) And uh, my stepfather, Mr. Walgreen, uh, used to run a little pharmacy on the corner. Uh, He taught me how to fish in Lake Michigan. We were, you know, down rigging for uh, German Browns and Cohoes and, and, uh, oh boy, did I get sick. You know, Lake Michigan, the chop is like right next to each other. I mean, I remember just pounding seasickness, but wanted to make him proud that I was I wanted to fish so I had this real you know <laughs> torn between staying home and going fishing with him and one day you know just after he uh, actually before he married my mom we he had bought a house in Stewart at the Yacht and Country Club if you know what that is on a canal and our first experience was renting a center console I'd never even seen the ocean I was I was I just turned 12 and going out to St. Lucie Inlet, taking a hard right and going down to the kingfish hole to catch, I always said it's misnamed, you go down there to catch Spanish mackerel, not kings, but it's <laughs> called the, the king mackerel hole. And oh my gosh, you know how it is, you catch them one after another. I was instantly hooked. 
And at some point, I looked to the east and I said, "Hey, you know, what's out there, Dad?" And and he said, well, "That's the Bahamas. That's that's we got to go there." And uh, I think it was like a week later, we were down there for uh, late summer, and uh, Buddy had has had a trawler. And he said, "Hey, they're going over to Walkers for the night." And I'm like, "Walkers? Yeah, let's go." You know, and just to see the Gulf Stream for one, and then coming up as a 12-year-old up on the, they had a little <clears throat> tower on it. I was up there, and to see the Bahama Banks for the first time. The color change. Yeah. Oh, just you're like, oh my God. I mean, I knew I was never going back to a lake. <laughs> and uh, we see Walkers on the distance, and, and Cork was there with me, and and. You know, I remember it looked 46 years ago like it was yesterday. He said, well, that's Walker's King. And uh, we pulled in here. It was the heyday, you know, 1976. This place was blowing and going. And um, they had just had a Bertram had her shoot out, I think, a month before that. And all I wanted to do was run down the runway. And there was rumors that there was planes crashed. And, you know, all those kids, <laughs> kids wanted to go see that. But I... I was always a place when we kept coming back over the years. You know, I've come to the Bahamas. I've never missed a year coming back to the Bahamas since I, I saw Walkers. And Cork never, you know, he never liked to stay here. You remember, mm, it was, yeah. hey, check in at Walkers, then we're Keep going, moving, we're yeah. going to Long Island. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, why would you want to leave this place? It's got everything. I mean, it's where the bill, you bonefish meet the billfish, blah, yeah, blah, oh, blah. Yeah. But we always would keep going. But the good thing is, and I think you remember those days, that it was like the last stop on the way home. And... He hated going home. Yeah. He was always yeah, in the yeah. dumpster. <laughs> and, oh, Dad, can we get a night at Walker's? And yeah. we'd end up, you know, two or three nights, and my mom standing on the dock yeah. waiting for us, yeah. you know. <laughs> you didn't want to talk to him that last uh, day. <laughs> but, uh, and then Walker's got hit in by the storms, which <clears throat> you guys are pretty young, but uh, it wiped this place out completely. And it was already kind of going downhill. And, and uh, unfortunately... My kids don't remember those days. They remember Walkers as a rock, you know. Yeah. And, you know, we would come here. You'd come here. Yeah, yeah. Dock over here next <clears throat> yeah. to this wall. Or anchor and, out, and yeah. Anchor out. And so, yeah, that's the story of me and, and Walkers. Yeah. yeah. That's also been, you referenced Mr. Uh, Walgreen, and that's actually how we met. Yeah. I was uh, the mate on his boat, the Wags, for yeah. Captain Buck, and we got to do some Bahama trips, and that's how we got to know. And then... Uh, I was lucky enough, and you hired me when you you bought yeah. the fleet. Well, those some fun days, Ian. I mean, we had Buck Marlow as our captain, uh, quite a character. I hope you guys get him on the show. Um, worked for Cork for 20 years, yeah. And you know, you you learn the best part of him anyway. Uh, yeah. And yeah. God, I remember those trips to the Bahamas, and you kind of had the young guys. I was sort of in the middle, and then you had the old guys. Yeah. And oh yeah. Just some, some wild times. Well, who yeah. was the policeman? Uh, Lyle. Yeah, Lyle, we had yeah. Lyle there. We, <laughs> yeah. Couldn't get away with much with Lyle around. Yeah. And uh, we always were like, hey, when's Lyle going to bed? You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the bearded guy was. Herminator. The, the, the John Herminator. Herman. Oh, the Herminator. <laughs> crazy what story. What a crew. You don't want to hear, yeah, you don't crew, hear his man. stories. But, yeah. And then. Uh, it was the older guy. Um, nice guy. Milty. Uh, Milty. Uh, Uncle Milty. Yeah, we had the crew on there, you know, yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was really good times. When Cork passed away, we went out and did the. Uh, we dropped an anchor on his favorite site there yeah. off Stewart. And the hill, yeah. All those guys came. That was neat. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a cool day. Actually, that same day when we were heading out there, we saw the sailfish free jumping yeah. out in front of the whole fleet jumping out there before we went. Like, all the boats out there, there scared like at half the day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. trying to get out of dodge. And then, and then that yeah. bird landed, and then just yeah. as I was making a speech, the alarm went off, and we're like, yeah. okay, he's here with us somewhere. Yeah, oh, definitely. But that yeah. was that was the hill. That was, know, yeah. Now it's Cork's Hill. Cork's Hill, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <clears throat> after that, now you bought the 52, the GG, the Axis here. And we started coming over here and doing some trips. We went up north for the fleet launch. Had a decent fishing, but a hard time up there. And then really we, we came down here and we're staying here a lot, anchoring in Wells Bay. And uh, we just had one flats boat then. We got three now, and that was the Whip Bray. And yeah. uh, with the little Evan Rood, and the we were Whip lucky Bray. enough to have uh, John Applenass show us a few of those flats, who was uh, the yeah. previous owner's son. Yeah. And uh, we spent a lot of time doing that there at the beginning, learning well, learning the islands from strangers and Yankee and Joe and all the yeah. keys. And I mean, there's a lot to the story. He's being a little modest, but 
I uh, had built a fleet after I sold my company. I bought a Westport and the Damon, and then um, I had the CV, which is basically what we were fishing off of, and had that crazy captain before. And uh, I said, you know what? I want a boat that can follow the fleet. And so this 52 came out. Uh, it was a, what we call an express. And a little later on, we put a little tower on it. But even though I'd never go back to that boat, we had a <laughs> blast on that thing. And oh, the, his first trip time. before we hired you yeah. is taking it from Stewart eventually all the way to... Uh, <clears throat> Maine. Maine. What's the town? Bath? There? No. Uh, the, oh, Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor, Bahaba. Maine. Yeah. And, to, Bahaba. Bahaba. and it, was, it, it was so weird that... We, uh, we had to use the heater, if you remember uh, that. Yeah, a few like, times. Does that heater work? Yeah. We're going to have to turn that on. Yeah, a few and times. And we, me and him, a lot of times it was just you and me. Yeah, yeah. Sat in that boat waiting for a bluefin tuna hit for a month. Yeah. A month. We saw a couple schools. We got a couple close and calls. and we, we finally were talking to this local, and uh, the guy, we're telling him we're doing everything right, and he goes, hey, by the way, if you guys are you shutting your generator off? <laughs> yeah. You and I looked at each other like, oh, God, yeah. yeah and he was telling us, you know, off. that noise. They know they get real finicky, and we're like, oh, great. And but be, uh, because the day we left was the day that the commercial opening season, season for opened, commercial, yeah. And we went out and followed these guys around, and they're pulling fish over the gun. <laughs> We've been doing this for a month, man. Yeah. But, oh. but then we took that boat, and that's how we met this guy over here, all the way from Maine. All the way to Grenada. Yeah. And uh, there's a real funny story. I'll probably let him uh, tell you how we met. Yeah. And yeah. it's coming God. up on three, three and four years. Four years, four yeah. Four years, yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and tell us. Um, so, yeah, Ian had gave me a call. I was, I was working for my brother. Uh, he, has, he has his own outboard shop in Stewart. Um, and Ian calls me. He's like, hey, man, would you, would you like to possibly mate for me in the Caribbean? And I was like, oh, my God, yeah, are you kidding me? Dude, that'd be awesome. You know, he's like, all right, let me make some calls, and I'll let you know. And he, a couple of days later, calls me back, and he's like, yeah, dude, you can come. So I'm like, all right, so I got to go get a passport. Well, what drew, <laughs> wait, wait, what, <laughs> what, what drew you away of the, from the glamour of fixing small outboards? Oh, right? God. <laughs> Mainly working for my brother. Yeah, that but, sometimes can be a complete but, nutcase. But please tell him the first part of this story. Go. Um, so Ian, you know, is hyping this thing up, but it's going to, you know, and, and a lot of it was too, you're going to see the biggest fish. You're going to lose the biggest fish you've ever seen. And, oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be, you know, a good experience for you. And I mean, he's got me all stoked. I'm all psyched. And the boat, the 52 Express, a beautiful boat. It was like, oh my God, this thing's gorgeous. This is the biggest boat I've ever been on. You know, this thing is it. And so we leave out of Fort Lauderdale for St. Thomas. Um, I'm super hyped. I'm super stoked. We're traveling with the fleet, so we could we we're going like what 17, uh, yeah, 15 15, knots because we had to yeah. hang with the bigger boats, and it was nice. First day, I'm up in the tower, I'm driving with my feet, you know, I'm behind <laughs> Gigi and Axis, and I'm like, this is it, you know, this is it, this is it. And about like 12 o'clock, one o'clock that night, it got to like six up to eight feet on the nose. Windshield wipers stop work. You can't even see. We're going off the radar. All, all you can see is is Axe's lights on the staircase, and you're sitting there, and it's going crazy. And I just completely fell apart. Like, no. What the, happened to the autopilot? Oh, the, autopilot, lost the autopilot that night. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the autopilot. Yeah, was was shot, so we had to steer the whole way. Yeah. I'll never forget the guy that was trying to fix the autopilot. Was like, yeah, man, we did the Caribbean in a in a '64, and dude, you think a '64 is a big boat? It ain't shit out there. And I'm yeah. I'm sitting there, I'm like, we got a '52, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with no autopilot. God. I mean, oh, uh, but that that ride was awful. Like second, third day in, I was like, no, dude, when I get to St. Thomas, I'm out of here. Yeah, and it was we did. I'm like thinking of ways. How can I get out? How can yeah. I? This is you're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. You're it was uh, four days. At uh, oh. about 15 knots, and after the first day, it was at least six foot every day. Just thrown right into the fire, and I was like, what have I got myself into? This is, yeah. Ian said nothing about this. Like, mentioned not one part. The next but, time he came up, I was cooking fajitas. Yeah. <laughs> to, come, to come get a fresh breath of air, and Ian's like, you hungry? And he's got one of the cookers, and it's like, tss, tss, going from uh, side to side. Well, yeah, but I mean, anyways. I think when I heard that you guys had all made it, I was like, oh, thank God. And I, and I asked uh, 
oh, I think it was Captain Smith yeah, at the yep. time. I said, I, I said, how is everybody? And he goes, well, I think there's had some issues on the frigate. <laughs> <laughs> we may lose a guy. I was like, uh, okay, well, that's all right. You, you know, just, the boat's you, there. We're you good. Got, yeah. You got us down there. But then, you know, I mean, you championed it, man. We we yeah. took off south from there and uh, did some amazing fishing. I mean, it was we, incredible. We ended up catching. You know, you put us on a marlin, and we'll catch it. And, and our, our big day was uh, we had left out of... Uh, off Mystique there. Off Mystique, <clears throat> and we were headed for... St. Lucia? Or? No, um, further south to... Uh, St. Vincent? We led St. Vincent to go to That's Mystique. Right. We were at yeah, St. Vincent, we and we were going to fish that fad, yeah. which we'd been out the day before and caught a marlin yeah. uh, with Craze White. Yeah. This time we were with Larry. Yeah, we went one for three the day before, and the two we missed the were big chairman. fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so we're, we, we were like, we got to get back out there. And so, yeah, we take off out of St. Vincent. You remember it was not real nice all three of those days. Rough. Rough. Not real. Oh, on God. the nose. And, and the 52, although a great boat, is not good in a head. I mean, if, you, oh, yeah, there's, if you're straight on, it's this. You know? There's pictures yeah. like rigging mullets on the way to the fad, like putting them on the dredges, and it's yeah. just complete waves coming over the, yeah. the top of it, you <laughs> oh, know, yeah. just taking it. And so we get out there, and we... Had caught a little tuna, yeah. a little blackfin tuna, and we decided to bridle him up. And we had uh, Larry with us, and we had um, Gabe. Gabe, and you know he's this uh, ex marine, so we decided <laughs> to put him in the chair. And I'm up top because I've been driving all day, and I just happened to be looking back, and I see the biggest fish I've ever seen in my life. Just take a whack at the tuna. Direct, I looked right down his stomach. I mean, I could see his mouth open. I was like whoa and, and you freak out when that happens and he turned and wailed on the blue island yeah the Blue islander yeah and yep. i yelled on to you i said yeah that's the biggest fish i ever seen and he just <clears throat> starts coming out of the water and we're all just in, in a daze we get you know when you get a marlin, on you get all the other lines in and gabe's a strong tough guy <laughs> he had this fish to the transom which i to this day i think it's 800 plus in two and a half hours I mean, we were getting into the chair and on a fifty. On we a 50 were thinking wad. we were thinking about killing it, and Ian's down there and he's got the leader at one point, and that fish is going underneath, and I could see it going back and swatting the boat, and I'm I'm just going, we're not putting that in here, you know? <laughs> and there's a panga boat not yeah. far off there. Yeah. He wanted yeah. us to kill it. Yeah, the yeah. local guy. Yeah, a and single guy. A we're picture, 25 miles. There's a and picture he's following us around with that there. marlin out, completely out of the water, right next. To the panga, yeah, and it's like as big, if not a little bigger than the panga. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you could pull that up. There's a picture yeah. of that. It's somewhere. Yeah. We can definitely yeah. find it's, it. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, you, we got that. We'll pull it up. This, yeah. You look at this boat and this fish, and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, and and then you know we've showed that to a few. There's some good video too of it jumping there past is, the yeah. boat. Yeah, yeah, uh, some real professional. Skip Smith, <clears> the minute he looked at it, he said that's over 700 pounds. Yeah. So, so that was our our big fish. We had a great trip down there in the Caribbean. Caught some other other yeah. great days. Uh, yeah. You and uh, my assistant, Cindy, we, we had a dry oh, yeah. spell. We didn't catch anything for four. Oh, God. I want to kill these guys. We didn't catch anything <laughs> for four days. Four days. And I decided to take one day off, and they slay them. And I'm just, they're, I thought they were lying to me. I'm listening on the radio going, they, there's no way they could beat them. You know, we got a marlin. I got wahoo dolphin. It's everything. Yeah. They had found a, what? It was, it was, some, like a, it was, it was some grass. Yeah, and a big you know, shipping uh, rope line, dock line for them, big three-strand. And we saw it slowed down and immediately slowed down. Saw Mahi, you know, jump. We're like, oh, let's put him out, There's, you know? Everything was on this rope. Yeah, every, every time we every passed it. Every fish you want to catch in the ocean, like the Pelagics, was on this rope. It yeah. was insane. I mean, yeah. we ended up catching like 10 wahoos, like 15, 17 dolphins, something like that. And like had a couple, couple big tunas blow up on like lines, like just yeah. like stuff just hanging, the teasers the hanging teasers from the rope. You'd have a couple yeah. big like 40 pounders come up and. Yeah. That was St. Lucia, wasn't it? That was that between St. Well, Lucia that we and... We fished uh, St. Lucia hard, that one little fat yeah, up there where we uh, where the yeah. guys had the motor broke where down. Where we saved the oh. guys. That's I a know, good that's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> that's a we great were, one, man. We we did our human deeds there. We went, and one day we found this panga just hanging on by a thread, and there were three guys on it. Yeah, tied to a fad. We we were we were wanting to fish. We are like, yeah, can you hold on while we fish? Uh, and they want to go home. We, yeah, we pulled up, and they're waving, and, and we're like, oh, they don't want us to get yeah, too close. they don't want us to get too so close. So we'll go to the next one. So yeah. we started going, and then they really started waving. Yeah. And then you, you know? can see the outboards up. You know, it's no longer sitting <laughs> in the water. They're bailing water, you know. So. It's like uh, nine miles offshore. Yeah. And so we said, all right, let's tow them in. about we, to be nighttime in an we hour. Gave them, we gave them a six-pack, each of them a ham sandwich, and they're all like this up there. Their legs are up. And, 
kicking back and you know doing this and stuff and we get back and they all were very happy with us and yeah. and the, we thought you know what we did a good thing and that word will spread about the frigate and so then we went south went all the way to grenada that was neat yeah that was the and three days later we caught that marlin yeah right yeah. after that yeah, after that uh, later, yeah, after that day is when we caught deep. the marlin so then johnny's into his job and i remember that you and i were sitting out here in the back on the 52 and and i said so what do you think? You know, well, you know, just like he said, he wasn't sure about the first four days, but since then, he's having a blast. Oh, yeah. I mean, we caught some ballyhoo one night, and you guys ended up catching a sailfish. Oh, so yeah, with him, yeah. Uh, which was awesome. But you and I are sitting back there, and I said, well, um, Johnny, I'm thinking about this, thinking about it, looking at this 68. Are you maybe interested in coming aboard full time? You know, and it wasn't. You were instant, man. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't I said, even well, think I let you about finish the... your last word. And I was <laughs> like, yes. I was, yes. I was like, what about this, the uh, small motors, you know? And, and I've never met his brother, but I know. I feel like I know him through these guys. And the one time I heard him listen, and he said, if I didn't have a kid, I would be me out there. You know? <laughs> and, but, you know, his brother's got, a, especially now, a great business over in Stewart. Yeah, Stewart's. Red Coast Marine. He's and, killing it. And uh, But, you know, so that was great. Johnny came on board, and we... Ended up getting what I thought was going to be my last sports fishing boat. And, you know, the 68, uh, we wore that out, you know. I mean, oh, yeah. that Put thing. We didn't travel as much, boat. but we certainly did a lot of fishing on it. What well, were on the mains, Ian, and the generators? The generators yeah. were, were high. When we bought the boat, there was 230 hours on the generators. And by the time we let it go, there was like in the 6,000s. And that's because we were here years. all the time and never had... We were just anchored out in well, well, didn't you guys have were the, in the here, no power. power. Yeah, yeah. like 12,000 hours <laughs> in, were in cooking, two years baby. or something. Yeah. yeah, They held up, too, though. I mean, yeah. that, that, that's a lot of oil friend. changes. A lot of oil yeah. changes. <laughs> and, then, and then, gosh, it's hard. to. We had that boat for a couple of years, and yeah. and I actually sold that boat for 100000 less than I paid for it, which was to good timing. But uh, in the meantime, about it's hard to believe it's been a year. A year, uh, yeah, a year uh, going on a year here for us. The Gigi got struck by lightning and just fried everything. So we literally had to tow her back to Fort Lauderdale. And uh, we moved on to the frigate. And the 68 walls started closing in on me. <laughs> and, uh, things were tight. Things were things tight. Things were well, a little tight. And I yeah. kind of said to Ian, yeah, God, we were seeing the 80s on the market. Let's go. Let's go look. About 30 seconds later, Ian's got one picked out. And I think it, what, this isn't the boat, but we... We were looking at a couple of them we and looked then looked at a convertible, yeah. Looked at a convertible, and we I always said my whole life I'd never buy in a closed bridge. And this thing happened to be it was over at Larry's place, wasn't it? At, uh, Admiral's Cove, Admiral's yeah. Admiral's Cove. And first of all, we it had an orange stripe around it. Nobody liked it. It's still there because we all love it now. <laughs> it's definitely grown on us. <laughs> um, it's a little signature. But I'm telling you, the minute we stepped on this boat, we're like, yep, I think we could do this. And I'm in love with the... It's a little cumbersome sometimes, but Ian fishes out back here. You know, they're wearing headphones these days. Uh, but having that enclosed bridge is like an extra room. It's it's privacy. Ian slept up there if we're overloaded. Yeah. It's, it's actually awesome. super comfortable yeah, up there, is. too. The AC yeah. cranks. Yeah. Awesome in weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've realized that a couple times. Yeah, it's I mean, nice yeah, we're going we back and forth. We definitely love it now. It was, it, was, it was weird at first, just kind of like, you know, the view you have now. You know, it's, yeah. it's a little more tighter than than having the convertible and stuff you're kind of locked in there so it took a little while to get used to it like the rock and rolling's even a little different without you know when you're inside other than being kind of outside you know there's always a difference but it like after a couple of rough days of of crossings it was like this thing is everything yeah this is the money because yeah, you're you know, still getting salty <clears throat> as hell in the convertible. You know, even though yeah. you got your eyes and glass up, it's like a, it's like what is it? The wagon, Volkswagen, Volkswagen effect. Volkswagen yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's super nice. So that's kind of our <clears throat> brief little history. Let's let's talk some fishing stories. Yeah. So uh, even before you bought Walkers, what would that be about 2018? Mm -hmm. When uh, we would come here and we, like I said, we'd anchor in Wells Bay and the docks were all dismembered and there was the one guy living here with his dogs i can't remember his yeah. name but uh we would pull the frigate in we'd park on the wall over here but uh we, we were doing a lot of fishing then and we had the one flats boat the whip ray and that's what we started going down on and those were some long some brutal days and now we got the <clears throat> the marquesas and the walkers edition but why don't you tell us some of your favorite stories about the early days of owning walkers and even before you had bought it and us kind of hanging out here yeah, well, it's like, you know, it's the fishing mecca. I mean, you know, we 
have a rule here that you know we have to catch at least one fish every day, and <laughs> sometimes that's <laughs> that's hard to do. But uh, it's where the bills meet the bones and everything in between. And uh, when I had uh, you know the island in '18, we would had to anchor out there without any power and stuff, so or docks. <laughs> And so we had this little 16 or 17 foot whip yeah, spray. Yeah, 16 uh, five whip spray. You know, there's certain brands it's... I love: Viking, Hell's Bay, you know, Triton, Westport. Those <clears> kind. <throat> I, I stick to my brands, and and uh, we had this little whip spray that I that I'd owned for a long time. We still got it. We still got it's it. Still, yeah. it's a great boat. Yeah, and get skinny. In the beginning, the exploration around here. I mean, we were kids in Candyland. I mean, just to go 50 miles east of here of nothing but uninhabited chain of islands that's got you know all this life behind it you know pilchers and bonefish and tarpon and and, and permit and uh you know grouper and uh, our favorite mutton snapper and uh yesterday we caught a massive uh african pompano out here uh, you know the list just goes on and on and on you literally can do something different every day and to explore these islands it's literally, I love to offshore fish, but when we have a day, like the other day, we looked at each other, oh, oh it's it's one of those days in it, and we run out to Stranger's Key, Carter's Key, Yankee's Key, it's about, you know, 30, 35 mile trip if you go all the way, uh, have lunch out there sometimes, and... Oh, it's the best. Uh, Spend the day, yeah. I mean, you're just virgin territory, there's, we never see anybody... Um, we, we now know where the fish are coming out of that yeah. one channel. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's an old abandoned house out there that's we like to step in on the beach. and So, yeah, the early days, I kind of miss those days. But, you know, now we know where everything is, you know. But, but they're still exploring to do. Yeah, oh, you, know, you still you always miss the Well, the, I want to get search. south down here to the, yeah. you know. Sail and mangrove. Yeah, sail and and mangrove. We really haven't got to spend too much time. There's so much to do oh. that, you know. Yeah. You get well, kind of lost in it. You well, know? then once you do find your spots, it's like, you know, let me take Hard a little to, break from doing any more yeah. searching for a little bit. Let me enjoy this. Yeah. And uh, we were lucky enough to have uh, your good buddy Flip Pallet drove uh, the Marquesa, <laughs> which you own now, from Stewart over here. And he spent a couple days with us, shot a little thing about the old days of Walker's Key Chronicles. I know you're a big fan of that. And <clears throat> you're trying to, we're getting our own Walker show going now. We yeah. kind of tooled around with that, but how special was it for you to have Flip come over and show us a bunch of those spots that we know now are good, and uh, eventually buy his boat and show us how to fly fish for Marlin? Yeah, I remember that day. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the history of Walker's always been really important to me and my family. And my daughter wrote a whole book about it. Great book. Um, you know, yeah, it's a tremendous book. Yeah. And you know, I immediately sought out Flip Pallet because he such a history here and with the show and I mean the show came out in 91 I was living in Atlanta at the time and it came out at 6 o'clock in the morning on, <laughs> on ESPN and you know my wife's like my god you'll wake up at 6 to go watch Flip but you won't go to church at 9.30 you know <laughs> and I'm thinking I told her well Flip Pell it is my church you yeah, know? Yeah. and so it would come on and so about two weeks before we closed I called Flip and he was sort of quick you know kind of arrogant a little bit didn't have much time I, I told him where he was yeah i've heard of you but but it's everybody says that nobody ever closes or gets it done and and i go well sir i think i'm real close you know hadn't been, it wasn't even closed yet and yeah. i said can i take you to dinner and he's not a a guy you want to take out to dinner he, yeah. he doesn't like he liked to stay home and, and cook something that he killed that day yeah shot with his bow <laughs> and so i went up to mcminn Mims. Mims. Yeah, Mims. And uh, we met him, and he lives just like you'd think he would back in the woods. He's got a uh, airboat that he accesses the national forest right there, and his house looks like, you know, an old ranch-style house. And and right during cocktails, we're all sitting around. He's sitting on the floor because he had a back problem. The fire's burning. And uh, right as we were having cocktails, the, my lawyer called me and said, congratulations, you just closed on, on Walker's K. And I'm stunned and I'm holding the phone and and I hit speakerphone and I, I said can you say that one more time and Flip Pallet started crying and how special it was that I'm sitting in Flip Pallet's living room and we closed on Walker's K it was stunning I couldn't believe it it was and then that night we went to That's a hotel awesome. room which was a, a famous uh, motel sort of a uh, bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. bed and breakfast called yeah. the Blue Dolphin that's 
uh, up there near Canaveral, and they have all these theme. He didn't know where we were or anything. They yeah. have all these theme rooms named after famous fishermen, and I'm checking in. It's very late at night because we were with Flip, and and I'm I'm like, just give me a room. And he says, Sir, the only room left, we, the only room left is the Flip Pallet room. <laughs> And, I mean, Such a you know. I'm thinking this Such a is, moment. Yeah. This is this is cosmic. It was almost like the, the sailfish jumping. You know. Yeah. And so it was it was really neat that he got to share that. Well, about a year later, it, like you said, Flip and his old buddy Dozer from the show. He was yeah, on the show John a few Dozer. times. They decide they John want Donald. to bring, the Hell's Bay over to Walkers, <laughs> and they're going to drive it on its own bottom. And this is Stewart, he, yeah. he's not a young man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, from Stewart, so they wake up at one o'clock in the morning. And from Stewart to the banks, a little bit of waves, nothing bad at all. Well, they see a storm in the horizon towards Walkers. And they hit the Bahama Banks, and you know how that yeah. can be sometimes. Oh, yeah. And they started hitting six-footers on the, on the Hell's Bay. And, <laughs> and it, those boats don't handle was, well at all was, in the What chop. was supposed to take them about six and a half hours ended up taking them almost nine. And he got to Walkers. He looked like a dead man. And I could not believe, and I, and I, I looked at him. And I said, "Flip, you need some sleep." And he, <laughs> he got on the yacht and he slept for 19 hours. I actually had people going to check on him, to see that we, that we didn't lose him. But I've got to be very close with Flip. We own <laughs> part of Frigate Rum together. Um, great man, um, one of the most unique individuals that I have ever known. Yeah. Oh. And and he is. Somebody that you could learn. You just, I just like to listen to him. One day he said to Ian and I, "I'm going to show you how to catch a marlin on a fly." And we're kind of like, "Oh, yeah, sure." Yeah. And both of us have caught hundreds of marlin in our lives. And and he says, "I said you're going to get a, lar- a live marlin unhooked in, on my transom." And he, yep, yep. And he, we had a few people on the boat, and he gave us everybody a job, and yeah. he's coaching all of us, and you're driving. Yeah. And two teasers, nothing else. He goes, no dredges, I mean, no we nothing. have a whole display when we do it, and, yeah. and, and he's like, I want two <laughs> teasers, I want one long, I want one short. And one guy's job is if a marlin comes up and hits one of the teasers, the most important job is to get the other one out of the water. So now all you have is one thing in the water. Okay, and I'll never forget, and I'm sure you had the same feeling, is watching Flip pull that marlin into the boat it was this magical yeah. thing he did with the rod and the motion and and it, letting it, it was back slow out slow too it and wasn't it was, fast no. it was it was incredible like that's what blew me away the, the pace that he had it and it was he was so in tune like you were saying where he just knew right where it was and he just pulled it away just to get it matter yes. and he had the perfect timing with it it yes. was it was incredible so now his job at that point is get that boat or get that fish right to the back of the transom. And he did it. And one of the things that amazed me is I've never seen a marlin turn. Like you could, this fish was literally doing this. Yeah, the back of the, the, back of the boat. Looking for it again. Looking for it again. And, and now the challenge is to get that teaser out of the water. And Dozer's over on the right side with a big 15 weight, flips it over. And now the only thing in the water is a little fly, a little hairy fly. It looks like a little mini dolphin. Yeah. And he whacked it. Shot it up in the air, came back down. Well, Flip had a film crew with them, and they got a little close. And they revved the engine. They revved the engine. So after and, the fish missed it, and the fish swam off. But I think you and I looked at each other and said, "Hey, it doesn't matter that we didn't hook that fish. We know how to do it." It was. Yeah. I was blown away. Every yeah. step by step was perfect, and yeah. it was. Just a great thing, you know. It yeah. was a very, very cool, and cool thing. I to went have. in such a doubter, and I looked at Flip, and I said, "Oh my God, we have been just trained by the master himself." Yeah. And yeah. so we got all hot on it. Well, let's go. We're done. So we're done. <laughs> it's hard. All the shit away. It's hard. You know? and it is hard. It's, it's not a easy bitch, at all. But yeah. we did. We went out. I think a couple of days later, and yeah. something. We caught a barracuda, yeah. which we were pretty excited about. Got him just like that, right to the back of the boat. Teased him up, yeah. and not. I swear to God, not five minutes later, we got a wahoo. Yeah. And right to the back of the boat, did the same thing. Wahoo's doing this. I was like, God, look at that fifth turn. And so it is really, it's a different, it's almost like the difference between, you know, fly fishing and using a spinning rod. Yeah. It's, it's just totally in a, a unique, because I would definitely yeah. do it again. And I think we will. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. Especially when the marlin bite's good or the yes. sailfish in this winter. Yeah, you need a good winter. bite, really, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, if they had so. a good sail bite, it'd be fun to do too. Yeah. Sailfish would know. be a blast. Yeah. yeah. So, were you with us? I was not with you guys when, when that happened. We had uh, Pat Wilson with us. No, that was Fred. Pat yeah. Wilson. Pat. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Then, uh, so <clears throat> let's talk about your big bone fish. You, I think we were, it was right when you did, we got Flip's boat. We were out there. It was me, you, and your uh, African hunting guide, Sean, was here visiting. Yes. And uh, we caught a big bone over there on the Grand Flat. Oof. Uh, got wrapped up a few times. You want to tell us that story? Oh, my gosh. You know, it was funny that Sean was here because he's, I've been hunting in Africa uh, while I owned my business for many years, and usually he's between me and a Cape Buffalo or me and a, a lion or some elephant, <laughs> and here we are. You know, now it's a bonefish. And um, the three of us went out um, just over here to Grand Little Grand Key. I've been fishing bones my whole life, Belize, all over the Bahamas, down in the Caribbean. And there's a flat over there that is probably one of the best flats in the world for big bone fish. And I see one pretty good ways. Yeah, and yeah. He's, the problem you have over there is you have these little one-stick mangroves sticking out of the water. And I don't know how I caught that fish because I hit him in the fucking head. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. like, dink. <laughs> and and I, I didn't snag him because he ate it. But, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know how I – usually when that happens, they're gone. Yeah. But, but it was two of them. Yeah. One was bigger than one. That sure enough, the yeah. big one hit. Yeah, he bullied the other one out of the he way. He pushed and... him right out, <laughs> and and then that fish just spun. Oh my! I knew I had the biggest bone I've ever had because of the way he was spinning line out. Yeah. And he was going almost like a checker game. He was going back and forth between these little mangroves. He knew what he was doing. He's smart. I'm like, yeah. Oh no, man! So Sean's like, "Don't worry, I'll get in the water." He jumps in the water and he's running. And yeah. He's <laughs> 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 and he, he unties one, and then, whoop, there's another one over there. He runs over there, and whoops, there's another one here. And I think that the, by the time he was done, there was four or five little mangroves we were stuck in. And then finally, whoosh, and that fish is almost running out that channel out there. And uh, we chased it down. You remember yeah, that for yeah. a while? And then, oh, my gosh, yeah, by far the biggest bonefish I ever caught. I'm, yeah. I'm You know, we didn't carry our scale back then, but it yeah. was, oh, God, I would say, you know, 10, 11 pounds yeah, for beautiful, sure. Beautiful, beautiful fish, uh, yeah. You know, you just you just know, you know what I mean? We've been doing it a long time, and when you have a fish like that, you know. Uh, the only time I'd ever seen anything like that was when Riley was working for us, and we were down on the end down here of Walkers, and we saw what I thought was a barracuda, and it turned out to be, I believe it was a 15-pound bone, and he ran and ran and ran and never stopped. And he had this rod, fly rod, backing and everything, gone. Took it all. It took everything. And, and he, he takes this beautiful <laughs> and slams it in the water and goes, this is why I hate fishing. And I'm going, Riley, calm down. There'll be other fish in the water. Hang there. Yeah, you know, yeah, hang on. Right. I thought the guy was going to leap off a cliff Back or something. down on it. And, uh, you know, but, yeah, there are some monsters out here. It's I always say it's, you know, these fish out here, you got to be tough to live out here. I mean, there's these big bonefish, you know, they know what they're doing. And uh, I think. You know, if you want the school fish, you got to go down to like West End or you know some of there. But they are monsters out here, and these guys have got permit. One day we hadn't seen a permit in a long time, but one day I put a little bounty on it. And Forty minutes later, Kareem's got one. Yeah, we found one at the end. We got a picture. We'll put that up here. <clears throat> we'll yeah. Get a picture of me, John, and Kareem with That's you know shitty grins fish, on our face. <laughs> 25, 30 pound fish, right? Yeah, it was a big. Yeah, it was, it was a, a good nice... permit. Yeah. And then uh, we saw a big one the other day when we were flats fishing. And yeah, then, they're here. They're definitely here. Yeah. And then especially this fall time. But uh, I know one of them, another memorable day, John, you'll love this one, is the first day we really got into the tarpon good over there. And <clears throat> we got a little tarpon hole. I'm not going to tell you where it is. You have to find <laughs> it yourself. But we went in there, and it was me, you, and Mrs. A, I believe, on the flats boat, and we found them. And I was like, we got to we gotta run back and get some bait and come back. So we ran back, grabbed some pilchards and John, and jumped on the CV and it actually rained the whole, almost the whole time while we were there, but I think we ended up going four for seven. And that was on and, the way in the inside, too. Yeah, and, yeah, tucked in, and it, we had a great day. I believe you caught one, Miss A caught one, I got one. John jumped, jumped off, off at least six or yeah, seven. Yeah. Well, you, we love that area. I mean, every day we go over there, there's some new experience. I mean, we, we've seen pigs over yeah. there. We, we catch every fish. You can imagine one a day, stingray a, jumped on yeah, it, one day an eagle, eagle ray, ray jumped right on my head and almost knocked me out of the boat. 
Um, you know, we've seen amazing sharks over there. Oh, um, there's bonefish over there. Yeah. You know, on that flat at yeah. super low tide, they'll get up on that yeah. little grass flat right there. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, probably when you talk about fishing stories, the, the neat thing is, is us discovering all this kind of new stuff that's out here. We, you know, we talk to people or we see it on a chart or we find it ourselves. And, you know, we've got probably eight or ten objects out here. Hell, we got more than that. Well, yeah. Uh, that, you know, we <laughs> go to for different species. We've got Kobe out here, yeah. which we know where to go for those. You know, there's, as I said, the African pompano. We know where to go for that those. That big cabara. The cabara, yeah. yeah. And like eight <laughs> feet of water. <laughs> we get, you know. Eating, getting that, eating on the we, surface. Yeah, yeah, you know, that was crazy. We get these big schools of pilter, so we do cheat. You know, we, we like to use live bait when we can, but these guys have also done pretty good with some artificial stuff, with the Uri twitches and stuff. And, you know, we catch a lot on just a regular old, you know, jig with a piece of shrimp on it. Yeah, we, a lot we, of conch try to use, you know, the resources at hand. I know today we went and got some ballyhoos. So, you know, we have a very variety of all types bait of... and things you can use to catch fish. So, being the Walkers podcast, sitting here at Walkers, we've had some, some great fishing stories about Walkers. Let's talk more about what's going on in here at Walkers. The marina is complete. The marina is done. I know there's supposed to be some villas along the way here soon. Yes, we're very close to 16 cottages. There'll be little duplexes um, that are hoping to be here. doesn't mean they're going to be open, but... but uh, uh, delivered here in January. Okay. And uh, you know they're prefab over in Stewart. You know over on the canal there, and it's going to be <laughs> interesting. And we'll probably put some press out when it happens. But uh, to see these cottages coming out the St. Lucie Inlet on a, on a barge, <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll probably draw some attention over there. I'll go check it out on the CV. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so, but yeah, that uh, will be the first step. And then of course, you know our our big thing, which is happening right now, is a utility building where. Um, I'm getting rid of diesel only for backup. We have two big natural gas generators coming, LNG, um, that virtually eliminate emissions and, and noise, and, and eventually the cost is much cheaper for gas than diesel. Um, and then that will support the cottages. Um, one thing I want people to know, because I get this question all the time, is about center consoles, is, is you know I've said from the beginning, I'm building this place for, for all parties, and the whole north wall of the marina is dedicated to nothing but, but center console guys. On top of that, they're going to have a restaurant and a bar very close to them up the hill there. We're building a very modern, clean, uh, bright uh, laundry bathroom and shower facility that I think the center console guys are, are really going to enjoy that. And then, you know, these cottages, during the season, they'll be a little pricey. Um, you know, but we figure some of these guys with million dollar center consoles can afford a, a night in one of our cottages. However, uh, we are considering, you know, building um, more basic housing, uh, more basic structure down on the west side of the island that, you know, we're kind of maybe be called something like center Con console village, which will be nothing fancy. It'll be a clean little room with air conditioning, maybe a little kitchenette, um, you know, some amenities down there. Um, you, you still get to use all that we have at the at the marina, but a little bit separate and quite a bit cheaper than, than the cottages. So. Yeah, that'll be nice. And, <clears throat> you know, we do, I'd say we do the majority of our fishing on our center console, our 39 CV. And really, to me, that's the best boat to have around here. You can go conking, lobster, and get shallow enough. You're on the bank fishing the wrecks. And you can still get offshore and chase the marlin and tuna, the deep drop. Yeah. So really, this is the perfect place to come with your center console, 100 miles from Stewart. I mean, some of these guys, you're here in two hours. Less than that on a calm day. Come from Friday to, you know, come back Sunday. You yeah. know, that's an easy trip. So Yeah, I mean, especially if you got good weather. I mean, you know, it's 100 miles buoy to buoy, I think, in Stewart. Yeah, correct, yeah. And, you know, so that's on some of these boats today, that's that's nothing. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, they they got stuff to do. There's the Mantatillo Shoals there. They can fish there. Yeah, the diving, diving. spear fishing is incredible. <laughs> Excuse me. And then, you know, once they get here... We'll have, you know, gasoline for them, which is which is big. Two of two of our tanks are dedicated to gasoline. We're gonna have a you know a nice general store here, as I said, the restaurant and the bar. Yeah. Uh, a, a beach that you know have some of the stuff for kids to do. But, but when you look at Walkers, you know, Walkers doesn't need amenities. Walkers yeah. is the amenity. You yeah. Know? And so, what I'm trying to do, at least initially in phase one, is to provide basic, nice services uh, from center consoles all the way to 
the super yacht. Yeah. I mean, that's really all people want, because if you're coming here, you're going to spend the day on the boat anyways. You want to be out there diving or fishing or, you know, hanging over at Double Breasted at the beach or even our beach here, you know? So there's plenty to do out on the water. You're not going to be wanting to sit around anyways, so... I mean, you, don't, you don't come you don't come to walkers though it's not really a place that, you know you want to just i mean you can relax and hang out here but you, you it's you come here for the fishing yeah you're gonna miss out on the fishing and the diving I mean, you and, don't have to go far it's not like it's a, yeah. a two-hour trip to go you go a well, half hour somewhere I mean, on the other bank than and, my walks in the morning you and you guys and i we're usually out of here in the afternoon doing something yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you don't have to go far at all everything's day, close yeah. i mean uh, if the weather's good you know and you can hit some of these far spots i mean we found that airplane down here, what is it, about 29 miles? Yeah, yep. On a good day, you can be down there in less than an hour. And oh, there's fish all over fish it. Fish are everywhere <laughs> down there. And very, you know, no pressure whatsoever. And so, so yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think people are looking forward to the restaurant bar. I know I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I, I sort of come from the food service business because our biggest market was restaurants. So, you know, I, I know that business quite well. And, and the, the, the key is that we're going to have not a... A huge menu we're going to keep the menu fairly simple we'll have special but it's going to be good solid food and really good service service yeah. is is a big thing to me i think that you know when you come here you're the customer and we will try our best to take care of you and it's a you know owner operated uh, family operated island and got a great staff and a great great crew that that pulls that off and phase two there'll be a little bit more coming but you know as we've owned the island it's so many people tell me, especially when we did the tournament, is, oh, Mr. Allen, don't do too, don't do too much, you know? Yeah. And that's that really hit me. And so, certain things we are not going to do. Yeah. We're going to keep it fairly <clears throat> kind of simple. Yeah. The island right now, as you all well know, is sort of in its natural state. And yeah. It's a, uh, you know, our challenge is to balance the environment with bringing it back. And I think I've got some great ideas sort of coming from the industry yeah from you know the natural gas to the way we're going to handle our trash um you know to the way we do water uh, it you know it's all uh, trying to make a model a microcosm of what i believe you can do all over the bombs yeah you're trying to be the most <clears throat> zero emission as possible and clean island and what i see you know we're definitely going to do that and be a model hopefully for the rest of the bahamas to to see that and kind of push that way. Well, I think what's really important is we're spending a lot of money on this is a whole water treatment plan yep. so that absolutely zero phosphorus will leave this island because I think the general consensus in the Keys is that's what's devastated the Keys is the phosphorus coming off the land. Yeah, the reef there, and yeah. And the reef. And as you guys well know, this is still pristine out here. And, and uh, you know, we're... It's like untouched. It's alive. You know, we're here to when you're surfing out there, it's alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh God, it sure yeah. is. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you a question. You know, I'm I'm not, I'm not a surfer, but I love I love to watch it. Um, spent a lot of time in Hawaii watching it, and Stewart watching it, and here, um, we get with the right conditions. Yep. Some world class surfing out here. Yeah. A lot of people aren't going to like this, gnarly. but it's, it can be as good as I've been all over the world, and it can be as good as anywhere there. It's a reef break. It's a slab. It barrels. It's crystal clear water. Um, Super the reef bites back. Huge reef it's, underneath. Yeah, it's alive. I've um, seen but guys running across <clears throat> the chasing jet skis that yeah. you know, they got caught in a wave and literally running like half, like shin deep, just scatting on top yeah. of the reef while you're sitting in 40 feet, you know. 30 yards away so what what conditions do you need Ian, that are that are really what you would consider perfect and it's not very often not very often here it's kind of like uh florida with that so here you really need a northeast swell or a north swell light winds a little south is fine um any other direction really isn't that good a little west is okay but really just need dead wind like that and first something day we, to make sw a swell. Like you guys yeah. really surfed through the first day we yeah. went out there with the CV and had the jet skis. Yeah, it was it was, it was pretty solid, early out yeah. there, man. There eight, was some it, big it was waves. Eight to ten, probably, you know. And I think I found that when we get those hurricanes way offshore, yeah, that they'll pound that that northeast surf in here, and then if yep. you get that light wind and 
But to me, what's wild is to see it curl like the Hawaii Five O beginning and, and the, <laughs> the wind pushing it off the top. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it it can be spectacular out here. The, yeah. you know, the problem is you you gotta you gotta time it right. Yeah, and it's it's you know when it's big, you can see it from the runway and the reef we're talking is you know that whole reef is two miles off the island, so you're out there. But there are some other waves. You know, towards Grand and stuff that are a little more mellow that you know we're we're starting to discover a little more sand on the bottom, yeah, a little than, deeper. You know, um, there's there, there's a couple we we see them sometimes if they're swelling. We're on the inside heading the strangers. Yeah. You can look out there and see the white water. Yeah, there's plenty. There's plenty of waves, plenty of spots, and well, the reason know, I asked you is because is again it's a I, big secret. Though. I'm a big fan of watching it, but <laughs> you know, is we have access here with the runway. Yep. Um, get here by boat. Now we have a little structure. Is it? I'd like to see a little you know surfing destination if we can you know? yeah you definitely you definitely have the setup for it you know especially once there's some villas like you said and people you know you could leave your boat here and yeah, you wake know, up in the morning and see the wave and see if there's a wave out there yeah. literally off from your villa be like eh, it looks like it's yeah it looks like there might be a wave out there yeah and if there's not you go diving and fishing you know it just adds another thing yeah. a special thing about walkers you know and there's a lot of a lot of hardcore guys who are going to be mad at me telling the world that a hundred miles from Stewart is a wave that looks like Indonesia. Yeah, that's probably. But uh, where do you know, go, Ian? Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, on, he's on the payroll. But there's a uh, there's a million of them out there. I mean, from here all the way down to I'm sure you know, know Guana and all that, Luther Surfer Beach. There's waves all over the Bahamas, and it's kind of kind of untouched and nice. And you know, there we've seen a couple people out there, but every time we've been out there for a good swell, it's just been us. You gotta know what you're doing too. To yeah, surf it's, that it's wave, a man. it's a real wave. There, you know. Yeah, it's a you real hit wave. That reef, it's yeah. no yeah. bueno. Yeah, so there's there's that. There's so much to do around here. So speaking of the villas and the construction and everything going on here at the marina, what do we have to offer people right now for people who want to come over before the villas are ready? Okay, so right now the the general manager on, on the island is a man named Jason Albury. Jason. And uh, his assistant, and many of you may know her, is Annie Flanagan, who. Uh, very famous family it's, plan again. Yeah, Annie yeah, herself, restaurant famous. Annie herself, but lifelong dream job. But she handles all, you know, the administration and the and the reservations and stuff. But what we have currently is uh, a very usable 2,600 foot runway east to west. A uh, couple little bumps on it, but nothing major. I don't have fuel out here, but we do have customs and immigration here. Jet which, fuel, that is. Yeah, I don't have. You know, I don't have jet fuel. Jet fuel. Yeah. Um, but we do have customs immigration on here, but they're not always here, but they're on call. If you just give us a little notice, we have beautiful floating docks by a company called Poralu uh, out of Vancouver that um, I don't think probably have about 75 slips, depending on sizes of boats. Yeah. Um, I've got um, 60,000 gallons of, uh, of diesel that we hold out here and uh, about 20,000 gallons of gasoline. Um, people brag about our water. We we don't um, take water out of the ocean. We have a 300 foot well, so the water's pure. All you have to do is take the salt out of it. So we have an RO system that currently makes about 20,000 gallons a day. We're going to increase that to 50,000 gallons a day as we as we grow here. So so the staff's always here. Uh, very clean fuel. Uh, great docks. Um, we don't we don't really have um, any food service here as of yet. But we do have a small, very clean little, you know, shower and bathroom trailer. Eventually, eventually we'll have a full bathhouse there and, and laundry facility that I'm going to say will be done in the spring. But there's still a lot to do here, a lot to see here. Um, you know, look us up, come see us. You can. It's been slow and it's a little off season right now, but uh, wahoo are biting yep. and uh, bonefish are always biting. So <laughs> they, this one, they actually start to get. So more aggressive the bonefish yeah i mean it's funny when you look at all the the charts in the magazine about where fish are and what time of year it's hot mm -hmm. in it's got the bonefish one it's always excellent all, yeah. year, all year long <laughs> you know and yes yeah, that's it it seems to be you can always find them i think it's a little better in the spring than in the summer really for everything yeah but, yeah but, yeah um, i've caught them on days where it's cold yeah oh yeah or it's yeah, like yeah. you know six, well cold and Bahamas is you know yeah. 55 I like the 65 cool days on the bone fishing and, though and yeah. they and they're little, loaded little yeah not as hot you know yeah definitely no, yeah you catch them year round no doubt yeah so yeah they're good power here at the marina as well good water 
Yeah, we got the website. Look us up there. You can call us, uh, text us. Uh, but Instagram, love, Facebook. Love to have you. Right now, we're five bucks in a foot, all in, I believe. Yeah. And it's going to stay that way for a, a while. Great deal. Great um, deal. Unfortunately, my gas and diesel price is very good, expensive, <laughs> but that is not my fault. So <laughs> go vote on November 4th. <laughs> Excuse me, 8th. We're going home just for that. No. <laughs> Do not cut this out. <laughs> and as long as we're here. <laughs> That's about wrapping it up here for us. Thank you, Mr. A, for coming aboard. Thank uh, you, sir. We have a blast working for you every day, and we're glad we can keep doing it. This is something we want to keep doing with the podcast. We are honored to have you as our first guest. But there's a lot of other things we're bringing out with the Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. What else? Where else can we find... Mr. Carl Allen. Well, I think I guess I'm going to try my own podcast, oh, and maybe I you like guys it. could be my first guest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good turn a crossover. Yeah. yeah, a little crossover there, but uh, well, you know, we we're pretty excited. I, I don't think it's uh, secret that you know we have announced uh, uh, what we do in our salvage effort for looking for uh, old wooden ships out on the Bahama Banks. And had the thrill of uh, opening our museum in August there, day after my, uh, before my birthday. Yeah, it was a great time. Um, had yeah, the two prime special. ministers there, which was incredible. Um, the, the museum is filled with, you know, marine history of the Bahamas, as well as a bunch of artifacts we have. And um, we have a license for a year, and it looks like if we're lucky, we're going to get a three-year contract because the government's pretty happy with the way we've done things and and uh you know i don't have any i don't have any partners in this nothing has left the country we've opened the museum Uh, 80 percent of the people that work for me in that business are bahamians so it's really an all-around uh stuff back to the country as well yeah I, i brought back a collection my wife and i did and it's proved to the bahamas that you know you can do this in harmony with with the government and i'm getting a lot of support you know from the general population i i think we're probably 80 percent approval rating again the way we've the way we've done things but but it's a big picture of you know i love this country and you know it starts with my love of this island the water fishing salvaging um it's it's really the life that after i sold my company that i wanted to have and we're, we're blessed to be able to do that and and to, to help people along the way is you know there's no better way to do it is to, to, to share and give back to a country that has given me and my family so much coming over here. It always amazes me how the Bahamians, a lot of times, they don't know that they're in paradise. I have to remind <laughs> them that we're all trying to get here. And, you know, they kind of take it as their home. It's like, you know, them coming to Dallas, you know. But, but it is a beautiful country. These people have been through so much hardship. I mean, when things are bad in the States, it's times 10 out here. I mean, you've seen it. You've yep. been with me yep. during all this. And, and uh, you know, to bring relief to them, to bring some help, to bring, you know, hope in the future for these kids, while we do what we love, can't beat it. You can't yeah. beat that. And yeah. I know it's an <clears throat> honor for me, and I'll say for John, too, it's an honor to see what you guys do, not only for Grand, but this country, you know, and it makes us proud to yeah, work for you. and Make a ton of great friends throughout yeah. the process as well. I mean, yeah. Coming over here, I didn't know a soul. I got at least 20 people. You know, I can call my well, friend no, that know me for... You're the godfather of a few of them. <laughs> and, uh, Basketball I, star I, over there yeah. in Little Grand. I got to imagine you guys are a little bit of a celebrity in Stewart. I mean, you got to yeah. feel that a little bit. That's Probably more here. More here? <laughs> more in Grand, yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems like I've been to a few places in Stewart, and I've, I've actually signed my autograph at the uh, <laughs> Schnook Nook and... And that. I told Nook. Katie's kids don't do that, you know. You know I, uh, <laughs> what, what's what's our, our favorite play? White tackle. White's tackle. Yeah. Can't even walk in there without all the guys. Hey, he's oh, here! Yeah. He's here! Mr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, we're. I think we're their biggest customer too. Wow. We are. Because they always tell me, God, you know, Ian's one of our best customers. I go, I, I uh, yes, I'm aware. <laughs> clean, <laughs> clean them out of their bonefish <laughs> yeah. jigs. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah. Thank you. The guy, the guy making them. Always good to up. be number one. You know yeah. what I mean? Here's a free shirt. Yeah. Here's, here's a free shirt. Here's a free shirt and a hat. You know, and a gold watch. Uh, like, oh uh, shit! The gold watch gave it away. Yeah. Here's a free shirt. Uh, Thanks for spending eight grand. Here's a free yeah. shirt. <laughs> He's got his own parking spot out front. I could never understand that. Yeah. It's yeah. Ian, however. Yep, that's right. <laughs> but 
Thanks again, Mr. A. Like Absolutely. I said, Thank like, you, subscribe. Sir. Our podcast, Mr. A with his. The Outdoors with Carl Allen is coming out soon. Get us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Check the website, shopwalkersk.com. Get your Yeti, your hats, your clothes. And Mr. A, thank you very much, yep. sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thank you, you sir. All right. Great awesome. time. Good, good podcast. Go for next. All right. Nice. All right, man. That one's smooth. Should get six or seven views. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that recording? <laughs> 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 <laughs>